Hi there, Andrew Jackson here, uh, AJ Design Studio. Just uh, another SolidWorks surfacing tutorial. Uh, this one is how to model a domed button uh, using offset surfaces. Uh, so basically I have started by making a curved surface. I'll just mirror this over. So this will be our base surface that the button is going on. The button or the feature doesn't have to be a button. So I'm just knit these uh, sisters together. So you can see what it will look like. So that's that's basically the curved surface. Let's change that dimension in the middle to three. Rebuild. Okay. So we'll mirror mirror everything over at the end. Once the model is complete. Okay, that's nice. Right, we'll delete the mirror and the knit. Okay, firstly we need to define the perimeter of the button. So for this I'm going to use arcs. But we will use uh, lines to control the corner points where the arc is. Top arc, side arc, bottom arc, just make the uh, centre points of the top and bottom arc onto the right plane, coincident to the right plane. Set some dimensions. Make the arcs all equal. midpoint relationship on that one. Okay, almost done. Ah, it's not horizontal. There we go. Okay, so that is our perimeter for the button. So now we'll uh, insert surface extrude. Let's make an amount to project past the curved surface in case you change the uh, curved surface at any point. Okay, now I'm going to insert two fillets. On the two edges. Make them a bit bigger. And also... Change the fillets to... No, no. Give it to continuous. There we go. Okay, now we're going to insert some um, a trim. So we're going to trim. Oops, got on mutual. Okay, extended. We're going to trim the curved surface with the extruded surface. Okay. Okay, so that's the perimeter of our button. Now what I'm going to do is create some offset surfaces that we'll use to uh, to uh, create some other features in the button, like a, uh, a ramped outer edge and a, like a chamfer, and then a little flat on the top. Okay, so we'll go offset surface, and we will pick the uh, so two millimeters inset. And I'll pick curve surface, so that's the height of the button there, half a millimetre. 
can see there the outside is trimmed so we want to hide that okay now we'll insert one more offset surface which will create the um, the flat area now we're going to trim keep that that's the outer of the flat well it's not a flat it's just an offset of the curved main surface okay now we can hide our tool surfaces there which is the offsets okay so you can see that is this offset surface little ring surface that's going to run around the top of the button now I'm going to bridge that to create a chamfer on the outside and we'll do that using boundary surfaces I'm going to do it in five steps I'm going to do five surfaces so insert boundary insert surface boundary select those two edge faces there and hit OK skip the corner do the next long segment with two skip the corner okay now we can go back and put on our corner surfaces with four and the reason I haven't done this all in one boundary surface right the way around is this way you can have some flexibility later if you want to um, if you wanted to make that a crowned surface instead of um, instead of line to line sort of thing curvature is a bit odd in there but anyway for the purposes of this demonstration that's okay okay you can see the curvature okay now we'll do the top one same thing curvature to face on one edge curvature face on the other other two edges don't need curvature because they're a, they're a crease okay so now we'll knit those surfaces together now it's time oh, you can see there the zebra plot what's going on okay it's time to oh, this to show you got some flexibility there see I just changed the offset surface that controls the height of the button there 0.5 rebuild it's this way of building things should be robust okay now on the right hand plane we're going to sketch the profile of what the button looks like in this case it's going to be concave so I'm going to use a style spline two CVs on this style spline make the middle span horizontal and I'll um, put in a center line so I can put a symmetric constraint onto the others you could use an arc or if you wanted this just gives me some flexibility to change the change the profile okay now I'll just add a few dimensions now I'm dimensioning this to the offset surface that way the dimension will follow the offset surface rather than to say an origin or a plane which means it won't follow it so we change the offset the depth of the button stays the same okay you can see the curvature plot there it's a little bit peaky on the ends that'll do for now okay so there's the center line the button now we will insert a curve going the other direction again style spline pierce relationship on the end point horizontal for the uh, first span and then pierce relationship again and now we just add dimension Okay, so we've got a 
center line and a cross curve. Now I'm going to use, I'm not going to use boundary surface, we are going to use fill surface on this. Before we do that, we'll just add a couple more um, cross curves there so I can control the curvature of the concave surface. Now we're going to use fill surface for this, not boundary surface. So fill surface, um, some people sort of frowned upon using fill surface because it, it wasn't that robust, but now uh, we jokingly call it a mature feature because it's been in solid work for so blooming long, you expect it to work. Um, seems to be much more robust nowadays, um, and this is a fairly simple surface, there's not a lot of curvature change or anything like that. So to save us having to trim back boundary surfaces to get true four-sided surfaces, I'll use a fill surface. So just putting the lower cross curve in here, set up in the same way as the, um, the middle cross curve. Okay, and just the dimension. Okay. Now with fill surfaces, to gain tangency on any face, on any edge, it has to, or boundary, it has to be a surface. You can't say uh, normal to direction. So that for our centre line we actually have to insert an extrude, which you don't have to do with a boundary surface. You just change the tangent condition normal to profile. Okay. So insert surface fill. Now we're going to pick our boundaries. Patch boundary. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and you can see there default with optimized surface on it creates singularities in the corner. So this is only a two-sided surface, and that is completely not what we want. So what you do is you turn off optimized surface, and now it lays a, a larger patch over the boundaries and trims it back. Okay, so now the only face we want to be tangent is, I mean edge, is the centre line. So we've made it tangent to the little extrude we just put in. Okay, you can see the curvature through the middle. It's a bit dumpy. It's actually going convex on the outer face. So what we can do is add constraint curves, which are cross curves. As you can see there, that's fixed the, the tangency a bit there. Curvature, sorry. Okay, now we'll add those top and bottom cross curves we added as well. So now it looks like it's all pretty much concave. Alright, and we can hide the centre line. Alright, so curvature looks okay. Zebra. So those cross curves, you can modify them as you see fit to um, get the curvature you want. This, this sort of thing works with for a convex button as well. It's just how I decided to um, set up this tutorial. Okay, I'm just going to add some offsets here to add like a split line around the outside of the button. A little shadow gap. Okay, so we'll just trim back. Sure, we don't need those on mutual, do we? Clear, standard, trim. And keep the bottom cut. And now we'll do a mutual trim on the outside. Keep the two pieces. One, two. Right, and just knit the button with the extruded surface. There we go. And we'll mirror this across. Mirror the two bodies. I tend to knit separately after the mirror rather than doing it in the mirror feature in case anything goes wrong. It's easier to problem solve. Okay, so there's our button. Zebra stripes on. Curvature plot.
Okay, so there should be a fair amount of flexibility as far as changing um, the offset surfaces near the top of the tree. And the sketch. Okay, this is a sketch controlling the depth of our um, change the curvature of the button there. Okay. And just undo it. Change the depth of the uh, of the scallop. It's one mil now. Cross curves there updated. And we can change other things like the uh, the height of that offset surface. Offset off the main curve surface, so that's 0.5. 0.25, make the button shallower, update, no failures, as long as everything extends past each other with the trims and everything you shouldn't really experience too much failure, okay make the button one more high, this might look a bit wild, okay so uh, thanks for watching my tutorial, AJ Design Studio, Andrew Jackson, um, button tutorial, like a dome button, offset surfaces. Thank you. Bye.